Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? Yo, what is this Come on, Okay, all right. Today is exactly about this. I'm here to teach you guys today how to use your Sony camera as a webcam without using OBS or any other third-party software. We're gonna install a driver from Sony. I'm gonna teach you how to do some twists in the configuration for you not to have flickering, not to have audio problems depending on your model of your camera. And just one thing, Henry 3. So if you kind of like use the window on the back, it's just useless. You might as well use the webcam. Is it better? Yes, that's much better. So let's begin. <laughs> Yay! I'm Henry, a Brazilian photographer living in Italy and in this channel I help you grow your skills in photo, video and tech. And today's tutorial is quite simple but there's a bunch of small things that you need to pay attention to and also this is something that changes with time. There are many tutorials out there teaching other ways of doing it that are not necessary anymore. This is the ultimate version of how to do it officially with Sony cameras. So let's go directly to the computer and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so first things first, you need to download this software. It's directly from Sony website. You can just search on Google Sony webcam and it's gonna be the first one, Imaging Edge webcam, or you can find the link in the description below. All right, let's enter the website and here you can find download how to use in fact. So just go to download and there's gonna be the list of cameras that you can use with this software. And mostly the A6000 series, the A7 series, the A9 series, and strangely, the A6000, no, but the A5100, yes. So you just gotta check in this website here to be sure that yours work with it. Also the compact cameras, including the one that I'm gonna be using today, which is the ZV-1, but also the other lines would work like the RX100s or HX and many others. So just select your camera, download it for Windows or for Mac and reboot. Because actually this software is not something that you're gonna have to run every time that you wanna use it. It's more like a driver. All right, so now for each kind of camera, there's gonna be a little bit of a different procedure to follow, but mostly they're doing the same things. So step one is gonna to be to disable the control with smartphone. You won't be able to connect to your smartphone at the same time as you're using it as a webcam. Number two, enable the PC remote function. This is actually what's gonna tell the computer that you wanna use the camera as a webcam, as data, not only to charge it. And talking about charging, be sure that you have the charging by USB enabled in the menu of your camera so that you not only are able to pass the data through the computer or the video, but also that you're gonna be able to maintain the camera charged during your home meeting. Number three, be sure that you don't have the remote app running on your computer at the same time, otherwise it's gonna compete with one another and you won't be able to use it as a webcam. Number four, this one is a little bit tricky. For some cameras, you're gonna have to set it to auto and then when you open the conferencing app that you're gonna use, you have to switch the camera to movie mode. And in other ones, you have to set it to movie mode before doing anything else. So just check to be sure whichever camera you have, which of the two procedures you gotta follow, because this looks something really simple, but at the same time can be what's blocking it from working. All right, so now it's time to connect the camera to the computer. All right, camera is on, let's test first with zoom. So new meeting, and the moment you open it, you can already see the Imaging Edge webcam logo appearing on the screen. I'll just turn with computer audio and that's it. You can already see the image from here. But one thing that you have to pay attention to is that the audio will not pass through the cable, through the USB cable to the computer. So you need an external source of audio not connected to the camera. Okay, let's try some other software. And something important to remember is that you cannot open two at the same time. If it's already been used by one of the conferencing softwares, you will not be able to see the camera on another one. All right, we're inside Skype now, and as you can see, the image is already appearing over there. And this is Google Hangouts, and funny enough, this was not working before the video, and right now is the first time that it actually worked. And I was going to mention it here, but anyway, it should work, and it is. <laughs> now, the resolution that you get with this is 1024 by 576, which is far from being the maximum capability of this camera, for example, which could shoot 4K, but having a shallower depth of field already looks so much better than the traditional webcam. So the other way of doing it was using the remote app and through OBS capturing the screen and then throwing it into whatever conferencing software you're using. But this is not necessary anymore. But you can still use OBS, of course, and this is gonna be an official camera listed inside the software. So if you wanna make it 100% professional and use the top quality of the camera recorded in 4K and everything, then you'd probably wanna go for a capture card. There is one from Elgato called Camlink 4K that is obviously going to allow you to shoot everything in 4K and also to pass the audio 
through the USB cable to the computer. So you have everything going from only one source and it's much easier and much higher quality also. If you want to check it out, there's going to be a link in the description. I guess that would be the route to go if you're doing some webinars or teaching online or something like that. But what I noticed is that people pay much more attention to the blurred background than to the resolution of your feed. So if you put a prime on your camera, you're mostly good to go. All right, that's all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more quick and easy tutorials with fancy, complicated intros like today. Click all those things over there and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Mm-hmm.